If you'd like to make your NFL games a little more interesting, you've come to the right place. It's the Even Money Podcast with Ross Tucker and Steve Fezzik. Yeah, Vegas, baby, Vegas. It is the Even Money Podcast, and it is presented by DraftKings, America's number one rated sportsbook app. I'm Ross Tucker, the former NFL offensive lineman, five teams, seven years, classic journeyman now. Got a bunch of media gigs. I'll be doing Army and Air Force on TV on Saturday, CBS Sports Network, 3 o'clock, and then Sunday night football, Browns, Giants. Should be awesome. In the booth for Westwood One on the radio. Check me out on Twitter, please, at Ross Tucker NFL. That's the same for Instagram, Facebook.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. And you should follow at Ross Tucker Pod because on Twitter and Instagram, we post the highlights from this episode and all the other episodes, just the highlights, the best clips that we think you should check out. You can also always check out the video version of this show, YouTube.com. Slash Ross Tucker NFL. We also post the highlight clips there. Please subscribe and comment. If you do that, you might get a cameo style shout out from your boy, your boy being me. But a lot of you, your boy is Steve Fezzik, the only two time winner of the Super Bowl of professional football gambling at Fezzik Sports. You know him, you love him. He is the man with the math, the man with the plan. Check him out. Steve, it was a bad week for me, buddy. It was a very, very bad week. I was down eight units. And, you know, I guess it just happened sometimes. In particular, all three of my teasers lost. All three, Steve. It was a bad what, – what can you say? We have a bunch of good weeks. Every once in a while, you have a bad week. I'm still plus 11 for the year. You are plus six for the year, and I, I, I am looking at it. I'm choosing to look at it like, A, I'm poised for a bounce back, and B, you have to have really bad weeks to really appreciate all the other good weeks. And you were just getting to the point, Ross, where you were like, you know what? These podcasts are a whole lot of work. All I got to do is bet these teasers, and I won't have to do anything else. So maybe it's good for your professional focus that you finally had a bad teaser week. I got smacked in the face by the teasers. Interestingly, by the way, you were six and two on your leans, Steve, I noticed. Mm -hmm. So your forced leans, you were six and two for the week. You were down one unit. We'll dive right into it. All of the lines, both in our recap of week 14 and our picks for week 15, all of those lines, of course, always come to us via DraftKings, America's number one rated sportsbook app. Those are the lines that we use. Typically record this on Tuesday, but for various schedule reasons last few weeks, it has been on Wednesday. Uh, Rams and Patriots, we both leaned to the Rams. Should have taken it. Jags, Titans, we had nothing. Cowboys, Bengals, we had nothing. Cardinals, Giants, we had nothing. Um, maybe some of these we had teasers. I'll get to that at the end. Uh, Texans, Bears, nothing. First real bet we had was Broncos, Panthers. Broncos were getting three and a half points on the DraftKings Sportsbook app. Steve, I took them. Two units, boom. I thought, okay, let's do it. I love it. Then we had nothing on Vikings, Bucks. Dolphins, Chiefs, I liked the under. Man, ended up getting to 60 points. I did not see the Dolphins scoring 27 points in that game. I was way off. I lost two units on the under there. Then you've got Raiders Colts. Wow. Steve, you were all over this one. You put two units on the over, and the the, 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 the line at DraftKings, the total at DraftKings was 51 and a half. It went 44-27. You, you helped get the D coordinator fired, Steve. You were on that one. Yeah, and the Colts, their team – in September, their games averaged 40 points per game. They have totally changed their identity. Now their games are averaging over 60 points since uh, Jonathan Taylor, T.Y. Hilton have come around. And that Colts defense, not good right now. So the Colts, a great over team right now in the year. 
Jets, Seahawks, I put two units on the Jets. I will not be doing that again. They were getting 13 and a half points at DraftKings. They lost 40 to three. Close one there. Uh, then you've got nothing on Packers, Lions, Falcons, Chargers. I thought Falcons are going to win this game. Well, the Falcons outchargered the Chargers with those interceptions. Uh, I mean, the Chargers almost gained the game when not getting any points at the end of the first half, and the Falcons still couldn't take it. So that was two-unit loss for me. Uh, Eagles, Saints, you liked the under, Steve. It went over by half a point. It was 44 and a half at DraftKings. Final score, 24-21. That's tough, Steve. Yeah, Jalen Hurts played much better than expected. Miles Sanders broke a long run. I guess some would say that's what Miles Sanders does. But uh, bottom line is that's a bet I lost. If I had to go back in my time machine, I'd bet triple what I bet on it because uh, number closed 42 and a half to 43. And I sometimes you make good bets and they lose. Washington Niners. We went head to head on that one. You put a unit on the Niners. I put two on Washington. They were getting three points. They went outright 23-15. Maybe a little fortunate with the two defensive touchdowns. And then Sunday Night Football. Steelers, Bills, you put two units on the Bills getting two and a half. No, they were laying two and a half. And they won the game 26-15. As for the teasers, Steve, uh, Giants, Titans, you teased that. Giants blew that one for you. Giants, Raiders, Giants and Raiders blew that one for me. Packers, Saints was a best bet. The Saints obviously blew that one for us. Packers, Chargers, you had two units on. That was a winner. Steelers, Browns, I had, and the Steelers blew that one for me. A crappy, crappy week. Again, for the week I was down eight units. You were down one. I'm down. I'm up 11 for the year. You're up six for the year. So we are still up for the year heading into week five, 15 on the DraftKings app. Let's do it, Brian. All right, well, Ross, hopefully week 15 treats you a little bit better than week 14 did, and we will start on Thursday night with the Los Angeles Chargers at the Las Vegas Raiders. Uh, the uh, Raiders, three-and-a-half-point favorites in this one with a total of 53. Short week, firing the D coordinator. Not sure how many different things they'll do. The Raiders aren't playing quite as well offensively. Henry Ruggs on the COVID list. I like the value of getting three and a half, two units on the Chargers. I like the value on the Chargers as well. The Raiders defense has completely disappeared. Should be a shootout. I will take the Chargers two units. Best bet. The best bet. Two games on Saturday this week, Stephen. We'll start with you. Buffalo at Denver. Buffalo Bills laying six and a half points on the road in Denver with a total of 50. So really interesting game. Terrible spot for Buffalo, who was in a great spot. And we had them on Monday night. Now, a sneaky, really short week. Only five days to prepare for Buffalo. So I was all ready to bet Denver. Big. And then I look at the cornerbacks for Denver, and they have three active cornerbacks left on the roster. Five guys recently in the last two weeks have gone down for to injury or suspension. So I just can't do it. With that many guys missing and Buffalo so adept at throwing the ball, I will lean to Denver. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with Denver. Uh, I do think this is a very good spot for them. You know, Buffalo put so much into those back-to-back primetime games. Now they're playing a Saturday afternoon. I feel like Denver's played better the last couple of weeks, even with those injuries in the secondary. So I'm going to I'm gonna say Denver gets it done and keeps this game close. I don't think they win it, but I think they can keep it close. Two units on the Broncos plus six and a half. The late game on Saturday at 7.15. I guess that's central time because uh, that's where I am. Anyway, it is the Carolina Panthers. They are getting eight and a half points at the Green Bay Packers with a total of 51, Ross. Yep, and uh, this is a good teaser, I think. The Packers are going to win the game. 
I don't think that they will, you know, I don't know if they'll cover the eight and a half or not, but they'll win the game, I think, by at least a field goal. So I'm going to tease the Packers down to minus two and a half. And I'm going to pair that with the Indianapolis Colts, who are laying seven and a half. And I will tease them down to minus one and a half. So pairing the Packers down to minus two and a half and the Colts down to minus one and a half, two unit, two team teaser. I'm going to play a teaser as well. A little bit of a difference in the second team. I agree in Packers. We trust they'll win the game. I'm going to take the New England Patriots in Miami from two and a half up to eight and a half for my second leg. You know what? I'm going to make three unit teaser bet. This is my favorite teaser in a long time. So uh, Packers to Patriots, three units. On to Sunday, Steve, the Houston Texans at the Indianapolis Colts. And the Colts laying seven and a half points at home. Total is 50 and a half. Yeah, really interesting game here. I will lean to Houston. Houston had to play in Chicago. Cold weather. Their dome team from the south. And Cooks mysteriously could not go with a neck injury. So Houston was down their top four wide receivers. So Watson basically had no one to throw to. Cook should come back. You know, Houston almost won that game against Indy two weeks ago. So recent revenge from that. I will lean to Houston. So I already paired uh, the Colts down. I, I still think they win the game. You know, Deshaun Watson might be able to keep it close, but I'd be surprised if the Colts lose this game, even though they had a competitive game a couple weeks ago. Colts take care of business. There's just too much at stake now. So I got them teas with the Packers down to minus one and a half. Ross, the Detroit Lions are getting ten and a half points uh, on the road at the Tennessee Titans. Um, not seeing a total here, though. That is because of the uncertain status around Matthew Stafford. I do not think he will play. Ten and a half seems like a pretty high number. Um, Chase Daniels certainly did not look as good as Stafford did last week. But I think he'll get all the reps this week. I think he'll be prepared to play. Um, I do think they'll play for Bevel. But then Galladay's out too. So it's just a lean for Detroit getting the 10 and a half. I, I'm not going to pull the trigger though on Chase Daniel and the Galladay-less Lions. Yeah, I'm going to pass as well. Chase Daniel would be a three and a half point downgrade for the Lions, which would have this line approximately correct. You know, one thing Tennessee did last week, which I really did not like, is Derrick Henry, they fed him. So he got 200 yards. Apparently he's from the Jacksonville area, and they gave him a big game. So Derrick Henry now has almost 300 carries. Last year he had almost 400 carries. It is just a matter of time. I get it. Everyone's like Derrick Henry just gets better and better historically the second half of the year. But Tennessee is not managing him correctly Running backs cannot carry the ball 400 times. If it doesn't catch up to them this year, which it may, it's going to catch up to them next year. Steve, the Tampa Bay Bucks are laying five and a half points on the road at the Atlanta Falcons with a total of 50 and a half. Yeah, what happened to Matt Ryan there against the Chargers? He went, he looked like he was 45. No arm strength, those two picks in the final four minutes, both times with Atlanta driving tied. I want no part of Atlanta. You know, it's kind of a sneaky good spot for Tampa Bay in that they've been home, frankly, for a month. They had two home losses, then a bye. Those home losses against good teams, obviously, and then a solid win. Um, you know what? I'm going to put one unit on Tampa Bay that I expect will finish strong with some energy, having had a late bye in the year. I really don't know what to expect from the Falcons. That was very, very disappointing on a bunch of different levels, how they performed out there against the Chargers. This is a stay away from me. It seems like the Falcons play well when I don't expect them to. They play poorly when I do expect them to. I'm sick of the freaking Falcons. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lean to the Bucks. New England Patriots at the Miami Dolphins. Dolphins favored by two with a total of 41 and a half, Ross. Right. This is a, a good teaser leg in my mind. I, I, I just don't think the Patriots are going to get blown out two weeks in a row. They are playing Cam Newton because Belichick wants to try to get at least a 500 season. 
they obviously know the Dolphins and Flores very well. And the Dolphins are kind of running out of wide receivers. I don't think they'll be able to run the ball all over the Patriots like the Rams did. I, I kind of like teasing the Patriots up to plus eight. And I will te- pair that with the Dallas Cowboys. The Cowboys are currently getting – oh, now the Cowboys are getting three and a half, huh? That's interesting. Um Yeah, so I'm trying to think if I want to change my mind on the teaser since the Cowboys are, are getting three and a half. I'll still do it. I'll I'll tease the Cowboys up to plus nine and a half uh, along with the Patriots up to plus eight. Two unit, two team teaser. Steve, or is it uh, we on to the next one here? I'm, I'm sorry. I'm gonna, I, I was just thinking about some things. Ross, I'm going to make a, a proposal for you. You never want to tease to nine and a half because 10 is obviously one of the key numbers. I think you should play a seven point teaser and get the fish up to 10 and a half. I I know, but then, well, as long as he's, as long as he's grading us that way, I just want to make sure that our units are like what people feel like they should be. Um, I think you're right, Steve. I think that is what I should do and just take the, uh, eat the number there. So all right, Sean Grady, grade me however you need to based on the odds, but I'll do a seven-team teaser, seven-point teaser. So the Cowboys are up to ten and a half, and I'm pairing that with the Patriots up to nine. So the Patriots are at nine, Cowboys are ten and a half. Make sure you grade me correctly. So it's two units, Sean. If I win, I only get one and a half or whatever it is. Let me know. And on the total, I'm going to go under for two units here. You nailed it. Where are the Miami playmakers? So their top three running backs are out. Gaskin's hurt. Receivers, um, Gasecki's out, right? They're they're tight end. And their number two wide receiver, Williams, went down. Now um, Devontae Parker is injured. So Tua's got no one to throw to. And all New England does is run the ball. Going to go under 41 and a half, two units. Next game, Steve, the Seattle Seahawks. They are laying five points at the Washington football team. 44 and a half our total. So I'll lean to Seattle here. I think the Washington football team has certainly caught some breaks here recently. Hey, impressive. They won three games on the road, but they got Pittsburgh in a horrible spot for the Steelers. And then they got two defensive touchdowns last week against the Niners. So Seattle, a strong lean. The only reason it's not a play is Seattle has division games coming up, so they might be looking ahead slightly, but still strongly into Seattle. So um, two things. One is I'm I'm canceling the Patriots-Cowboys teaser, and I'm doing that because I want to just take the Cowboys plus the three and a half for two units. I, I don't think the 49ers are very good right now. I think the Cowboys have a great chance to win that game. I love the value of getting the three and a half. Two units on the Cowboys. I had them written down on both the side side and the teaser side, and I lost track of where I was at. So uh, nothing with the Patriots, Dolphins then. I'm taking the Cowboys plus three and a half, two units. And, uh, you know, I really don't think Alex Smith's going to play. I think that there's an issue there with his calf. I love Seattle laying five and a half if it's Haskins. There's an outside chance that Smith plays, but even if he does, I think he's going to be even more limited than he has been. I think Seattle's going to send the house at him. I think it's a bad deal. I'm going to go with Seattle. Only one unit. I don't like laying five and a half, but one unit, Seattle, laying the five and a half. All right, Ross, Chicago. uh, They are getting three and a half points. The Minnesota Vikings, 46 and a half total. Bears have played better two weeks in a row. Trubisky's playing better. Montgomery's playing better. I don't think the Vikings are playing that great. I know Dan Bailey shouldn't miss all those kicks again. But this, to me, is like a toss-up game. Anytime it's a toss-up and I'm getting more than a field goal, I'm in. Chicago, plus three and a half, two units. I'm out. I'm going to lean to Minnesota. I know the Bears had a super impressive game, but – Like I said, the circumstances were there for the Bears to have a home run spot against the Texans with the weather and the injuries to the wide receivers to Houston. So I will lean to Minnesota. I'm not laying three and a half. 
I would need to get three. So I'll lean to Minnesota. Next game, Steve, the Jacksonville Jaguars getting 13 and a half at the Baltimore Ravens with a total of 46 and a half. All right. I'm not going to watch this game because I don't want to watch it because I'm going to bet on Jacksonville for two units. Look at the spot for Baltimore. Fourth consecutive week, short week. They've had six days, six days, six days, and now they have six days again. At some point, that is going to catch up to you as a team. Looks like Minshew is going to go the best quarterback for Jacksonville here. And Jacksonville, despite having only won one game week one, they continue to try hard from what I see. Uh, I can see this being a game where Baltimore doesn't care about margin and just hands the ball off. As bad as the Jacksonville defense is, their run defense is better than their pass defense. So uh, we'll take Jacksonville two units. I'm with you, Steve. Um, I think Minshew practicing all week is a good sign. And they're naming him the starter, so he's all about it. They'll design the offense around him. Baltimore, this is a bad spot for Baltimore. Bad spot. Back-to-back primetime games. Now you're playing a 1 o'clock game against Jacksonville. Um, I, I, like, I like Jacksonville getting the points as well. One unit, though. Only one unit on Minshew Mania. Best bet. The best bet. All right, next game. Ross, I know you already talked. You already made your San Francisco-Dallas bet, uh, just to reset the line here. It is uh, three-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, the, the Niners are in Dallas with a total of 45-and-a-half. And I'm going to go ahead and do a lean in this game. I'll lean to the 49ers. Dallas crushed the Bengals, but they were very fortunate in the game, plus three in turnovers, um, long fumble recovery touchdown. And the 49ers, very unlucky in their loss to Washington with the two defensive scores. So with one team getting super lucky, one team getting unlucky, getting a little bit of value, I think, on the point spread here with the Niners, just a lean to the Niners. So nothing else you need to add on that, Ross? No, I think it's a toss-up game. And I've been pretty clear over the years, if I think it can go either way and I can get three and a half, I'm doing it. I'm doing it this week with the Chargers, the Bears, the Cowboys. That's what I'm doing. All right, then let's move on to the uh, late games, 4 o'clock games. Ross will start off with the Jets at the L.A. Rams. 16.5-point favorites are the Rams with a total of 44.5. Yeah, so I'm not laying 16.5 points in an NFL football game, but I'm sure as heck not taking the Jets and the points after last week. I pass. If anything, I would lean towards the Rams destroying the Jets. I'm going to pass as well. That 40-3, to the... My goodness, the Jets are just historically bad. Um, sometimes on these big spread games, you just have to try to get in the head and see if the team wants to get margin, and I don't know if they do. I pass. Next game, Steve. The Philadelphia Eagles at the Arizona Cardinals, where the Cardinals are laying 6.5 and points, and the total on this one is 48.5. So um, positives for both quarterbacks, Aaron Murray, excuse me, Kyler Murray had had three straight games with only five rushes. He had had that shoulder injury and was not running the ball. Finally ran the ball last week, 13 times. Arizona's offense so much better when he's mobile. But uh, what Jalen Hurts did, that was shocking to me. Just shocking how good he was, ran for over 100 yards. Can that continue? We will see. But um, with the buy sign blinking on both quarterbacks compared to what was expected, Going into last week, I'm going to pass. Yeah, so the issue here is the Eagles secondary is absolutely decimated by injury. Rodney McLeod done for the year. Avante Maddox out for this game. Darius Slay in the concussion protocol. Makes it really tough uh, to take the Eagles. That'll just be my lean to the Eagles getting the six and a half. I mean, they were getting, what, seven against the Saints. And the Saints are better than the Cardinals. And Jalen Hurts proved he was pretty decent in that game. So I think the value is there with the Eagles. But the secondary concerns are a little bit much for me. Just a lean for Philly. All right, next game, speaking of the Saints, they are at home taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. Chiefs, two-and-a-half-point favorites. Uh, total is 50-and-a-half. I thought about teasing this one up. And pairing it with the Patriots, teasing the Saints up to plus eight and a half 
because the Chiefs have not been able to put anybody away. They haven't covered in forever. Everything's a one-score game. I just showcase game, everybody watching. I think it's going to be Taysom Hill quarterback again. Can't do it. I would lean towards laying the two and a half with the Chiefs. I'll lean to the Saints here. Bad spot for the Chiefs with Pittsburgh's demise. Now the Chiefs can look at this game and say, even if we lose, we're probably going to get the number one seed. Fourth road game in five weeks for Kansas City. All of the significant travel. They haven't had a short road trip along the way. So uh, here's a Saints team that was on a long winning streak before that loss. So I can make the case the game means more to New Orleans now. I'll lean New Orleans. Sunday night football, Steve, the Cleveland Browns, the New York Giants. Uh, Cleveland laying four and a half points. Total is 45 and a half. All right. So I want to take the Giants, but Daniel Jones with that hamstring, no rushes last week. So this is a guy that's been very effective running the ball, run about five times per game. And now he throws up a bagel when his team's getting crushed and having no offense. And that tells me that may well repeat itself. If Jones isn't mobile, the Giants offense is not going to be effective. And we know Cleveland can put points on the board. I'll lean Cleveland. Yeah, I'm a, I'm a lean here for Cleveland too. I don't love the spot for the Browns after that unbelievable game Monday night. But it's still a Sunday night game. It's prime time. They're trying to clinch a playoff berth. I still think they'll play pretty well. And I, Honestly, the Giants can't play as bad as they did against the Cardinals. They, can, they couldn't possibly play worse than that. It's just a lean for Cleveland for me as well. All right, let's wrap it up, Ross. Monday night football, the Pittsburgh Steelers, the Cincinnati Bengals. Steelers, 12.5-point favorites. Total is 40.5. So the Bengals are terrible. And I don't think that they will score at all in this game. Like, maybe 10 points. I do think the Steelers get to 20. The Steelers... I believe, are due for a breakout game. They've been so bad the last couple weeks, and I think they're going to kind of take it out on Cincinnati on a Monday night football game. 12 and a half, though, is a pretty big number in this game. I'm going to lay it. I'm going to put one unit laying the 12 and a half with the Steelers. I think that they are going to have a breakout game and open up a can of whoop-ass on the Bengals Monday night. I agree. Look at the Steelers' third road game and or third game in 11 days, and they came up empty against Buffalo. And here's a team that had to play these short weeks. They look good against the Redskins in the first half, led 14 0, then ran out of gas. They look good against the Bills, led 7 3, end of the first half, ran out of gas. Now that they get an extra day before this Monday night game, I think that that benefits the Steelers greatly. Now, the book on the Steelers is as a big road favorite. You want no part of this team. All the trends say they're terrible. Well, this is a great spot, though, for them to be focused and motivated versus the divisional opponent that there's bad blood with. They're going to kill them. Pittsburgh minus 12 and a half, two units. Best bet. The best bet. Love it. Three best bets this week. The Chargers on Thursday night, the Steelers on Monday night, and the Jaguars on Sunday afternoon in between. Please check us out on social media. He is at Fezzik Sports and only at Fezzik Sports. I'm at Ross Tucker NFL. We are at Ross Tucker Pod. You can always find all of our shows, youtube.com slash Ross Tucker NFL. Other than that, good luck, everybody. Hope you guys win some money. Thanks for listening to the Even Money Podcast. Make sure to also subscribe to the Ross Tucker Football Podcast, the Fantasy Feast, Business of Sports, and the College Draft. All available at Apple Podcasts, RossTucker.com, or wherever podcasts can be found.